I'm doing some uh, standoffs uh, for the mounting here, down here for the mill head, really, I needed, so I just thought I'd show you. This I'll turn at, uh, with the manual, at uh, I think around uh, here. This was done with a one-to-one, -one, uh, or at least almost one-to-one -one configuration. So I'll then just swap now. So I'll get this to the outer and this to, so I can choose between the three um, uh, steps from the motor. But th this will give me the the most, uh, let's say, advantageous uh, torque or conversion ratio here. Try to show you in real time how I do it. Uh, you need a spanner, of course, 19 mil for the screw that holds this, or the knot that holds this on the rear. So you loosen the belt here. Of course, now this will go on the inside. So just leave it there for now. Loosen the knot. And then keep it up there. Just take the belt out, like so, and on this one. You know, you can get it on afterwards, like so, and then I do the rear pulley here, like so, and I tighten this, not on the inside here. Keeping the tension. Yeah, should be okay. Maybe a little bit more. And then this here. And now, of course, lift the motor again. And then I have the three speeds available here. So I can then, for example, then do the, the same again here. And then I get a little bit less than in disadvantage here or if I do this one for example here I get one to one and then three to one like so so let's try that just slip up again about 50 hertz now If I increase it to 100, so I run it around 500 hertz. I found it about the end, like so. Does it really matter? Let's find out. That was an infeed of one and a half millimeter, so I took off three millimeter of the diameter. And that's zero. And I go in one and a half millimeter, so three millimeters of the diameter. I'm using hand feed now. Mm. 
So let's try a small diameter uh, with the uh, highest speed setting I can get with this setting on the on the belts. Uh, so then I go from this and over here and here. This will give me a little bit less than one to one. And let's see what we get for speed. About 50 hertz. And there about. Try a small diameter piece, and I'm tempting to get um, this done at um, a lower setting, really. So I try here. Maximum speed now 100 hertz, gives me 921 RPM. Yes. 3 millimeters of the radius or 6 millimeters of the diameter. No problem. Not so labor. So for me this just proves that I can do with one setting really at 100 hertz there and then uh, running down to 50 hertz. I get 464. So let's try this now with a, a, a large diameter piece. I didn't find any really suitable material with the flange like uh, I have here in um, steel. So this cast iron um, x Myford um, bull gear will have to do. You see how this is molested beyond repair. So I can uh, do with just um, taking off that, um, I guess. I guess it's also going to be a bit messy. Um, not the best test for doing the uh, the same setting uh, just at lower rpm as the other but uh, we'll try okay 50 hertz gives me 460 rpm still just want to do this manual to show this well um, try to take off the whole um, depth of the gear in one setting close to three millimeters uh, aside as so a six uh, millimeter uh, diameter reduction so trying to reduce the mess here and just find my vacuum cleaner so i'll be just uh, hand feeding this uh, anyway with the um, hand build on the side of the machine this one I've already set the depth, so to speak. I'll do this manual. Anyway, but um, it, um, 
cleaned off that. Nice, and uh, there was no hesitation in the no uh, speed reduction or anything, so this was probably too easy. And very messy, as you can see. I'll now try a large diameter um, turning operation. And I set it to the belt position, which is most advantageous, namely 3 to 1 to the spindle and 2 to 1 on, from the motor, so 6 to 1 altogether. And, and the speed is available here. Can be as low as uh, this, with quite good torque. And to avoid belt slipping, I also um, swapped to the, um, to a, I mean, did away with the link belt on these uh, lower RPM settings. I can go higher of course also, and then in this case 50 Hz as a nominal main frequency gives me about 175 RPM. So we can try there. As you can see the, the workpiece in question here is a um, bigger diameter piece and I have also then uh, managed to change um, the truck with external doors to mount such a piece steel piece I'm using a positive uh, insert like this one from EPT in England these are um, aluminium inserts Positive brake, as you can see, probably at least from the angle there. I try to let's say standardize on those, and because this is now such a big piece, I've run out of travel, so I swapped the two. Also, I can. This is of course an operation that is uh, well suited to, um, to automatic um, uh, facing um, or turning operation facing this piece. Well then just now try manual because I want to change the, the feeds and speeds uh, a little bit and then also want to try to see when it stops, how much can I take here. So starting off let's say I have uh, here. So I'll try then to set this now to one millimeter and at uh, 50 rpm, one millimeter feed or step the cut and if I choose uh, let's see I go in uh, two millimeters it functions at least Okay, that went okay also. Let's see how much this is now. Two point twenty eight. So let's go in further. Okay, so then the belt slipped. So at four millimeters, uh, the belt slips a little bit. But that's really not too bad. Let's try to go in a little bit, and then let's use uh, two is a little bit. Uh, uh, at an angle here, but anyway. Just 
hands hit each other. That might be too tough. So it's a little bit more shallow. That seemed to perform much better. So, um, so around one millimeter depth of cut, like so, and four millimeters in. Uh, I mean, the width of cut. I think that's okay. That tells us something about the performance uh, of the machine from this kind of heavy turning and a little bit forcing it on a high, uh, large diameter piece to um, these tests of the small diameter at high speeds.